Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into the channel. Brendan here, AKA Cliff Jumper. Ignore the cut on my forehead. I had a late night with a Cremorian Fangor beast. Actually, no, um, if I'm being real, my, I had an argument with the door on my R32 and the R32 one. So don't argue with the door on your car. Anyway, what we are doing today is dealing with a typical old car problem that is starting to take place on the Mark IV R32. And weather allowing, it is a little, eh, a little sketchy. We might run into some rain. It's been raining all week here in San Diego. Sunny San Diego is not staying classy. We're getting lots of rain. But anyway, our 20 year old Mark IV has a few old car issues and one of them I'm gonna show you right now. You may be familiar with it. You may not even know that this exists and it might be an issue on your Mark IV VR6 20, it could be an issue on your VR6 12 valve, 24 valve or your R32. So this kind of applies to all of those. Let's check it out. So under the hood of the VR6 motor right here is this very interesting little thing called the changeover rod. It's basically a set of valves that runs throughout your intake manifold and it switches over the intake runners from uh, long runners to short runners depending on RPM and engine load. This is the, the VGI, basically back in the early 90s, Volkswagen developed this thing called the VSR manifold, which the va variable intake geometry became the Schrick VGI. Uh, they sold the rights to Schrick to make it. And then they took the rights back and they made this themselves on the later VR6s. So this is on all the 12 valve and 24 valve VR6s and of course the R32 motors. And what happens is you may notice this little rod looks like it's supposed to connect to this little ball right here. Yes, it's supposed to look like that. And it's supposed to go back and forth and change the valve positions. But this wears out and pops off like you saw mine. So the good news is our friends at Grooven Parts have made machined metal versions of all of that so that we can take off the worn out plastic parts, which of course Volkswagen does not sell separately. And we can replace them with machined ones that are never gonna wear out and they'll be awesome. So I've got those in this bag right here and we are going to install them on that. I'm gonna walk you through it. Online, I have not found any instructionals on this other than a PDF document that dealt with replacing the bushings on the changeover rod itself. And we are gonna do that. We're going to do those bushings while we're in there. So just to give you an overview, it involves taking off this cap right here. I think they are Torx T30 bolts. And then we take off this bracket right there, two more Torx T30 bolts that frees up this thing. And that will allow us to slide out the changeover rod. It comes out of the way here, I, we should have enough room to be able to do that. We're gonna take this out of the way first, just to make sure we have enough room. And then we should be able to change out that thing and we should be good to go. So these are the replacement parts from Groovin, nicely machined. You see they even have a nice little Delrin bushing inside there so that this new metal ball will fit perfectly in there and work great. And then these are the bushings that will go on the shifter rod itself that goes throughout this. So we are gonna swap those onto there. First thing we're gonna do here is remove this engine cover. It just pops up, be gentle because it's old and brittle, but it should just lift off a couple of clips and that should give us the room we need to get around here. We're gonna remove both of the screws on this little cover panel and get it out of the way as well. They're both Phillips head screwdrivers or screw bits. So that just comes out of the way, easy peasy. 
We'll put the screws back in their holes just so I don't lose them. So I've got a Torx 30 bit I'm gonna use and we are going to focus in on this one first. So uh, this, I might want to move out of the way. Just to make life easier for myself. So I'm just going to unclip that. That gives me some access here. And that's actually still not great access because there's a bracket for the headlight right in the way. So I will take a slightly different approach to that. Handy dandy 90 degree. <laughs> and that should do us just fine. There we go. And those screws come out really easily. This little tool, by the way, it's really pretty inexpensive on Amazon, like a few bucks. Highly, highly recommend getting it. It definitely gives you some great angles to get in there. So that one is off. Now what we're gonna do is very carefully pop the cap off here and it should come off fairly easily. Prying it off with my thumbnails here. Oh. And of course I dropped it down into the, uh, <laughs> um, the tray underneath. So I'm gonna have to go dive for that. Don't do what I just did. 20 minutes later. All right, so sometimes the lesson is in uh, learning what not to do. So <laughs> hold on to this when you pop it off. I have a factory steel skid plate, so I actually had to remove some uh, panels underneath in order to be able to reach up above it and grab this thing from out from under the car. But now we have it. The reason that we pulled this off the end instead of just pulling out the rod from this side is it's got this very important little gasket on the end there that seals against the rod. And here's the danger. If you don't pull this off and make sure you have the gasket, when you're pulling the rod out, when you're pulling the rod out here, this gasket could come off and drop down into your motor, which is really not good. And that's not as simple as just pulling off a couple of little panels to get at the part you dropped. So take this off first, make sure you have the gasket. Sometimes that gasket will still be on the end of the rod itself. So make sure you have the gasket. If it's on the rod, pull it off the rod, set it aside have it for later before you move on. Now we're gonna move on to this side and hopefully it won't be as dramatic in removing these screws. So now we have this whole assembly should be able to slide off. Uh, there is a recommendation to remove this rod end while everything is still in here. So there's a little tab that you press down in order to slide this off. You don't need any special tool to do this. Just press down gently on the tab. You don't want to break it. Just gently and that slides right off. Boom. And that frees up this assembly to slide off. And we're gonna make sure we don't drop any gaskets on this end of it. Underneath here, there is a little vacuum hose, which in my case is completely trashed. So we will be replacing that. Look at that, that is just falling apart. The other end of it is stuck on the, the hose here. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull that leftover vacuum hose off of there. It's just deteriorated. We'll put some new hose connector on there 
and that gives us access to this deal. So let's deal with this and then we'll come back to the rod. All right, this assembly, this is the little actuator. It's got a diaphragm inside it and this rod assembly in the center is what we're replacing with this. So there are some clips that we need to remove very gently, just work our way around and take our time with it. It's old, which means it's brittle. So we're gonna go around and make sure that we're able to move them all without cracking any of this. And on this connector here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove as well. It's got a squeeze con connector. I can see this being a uh, something that could break really easily while we're manipulating this. And true to form being an old Volkswagen squeeze connector, it doesn't want to come off either. So second thought, I will leave it alone. <laughs> and we're going to give it a little bit of uh, RTV around the, the edge here because it feels like it's not sealing great. And I don't want this to be a source of a vacuum leak later on. This would be a really tough one to find without a smoke check. So these tabs are just cracking because this thing is old and brittle as, as heck. So what we're gonna end up doing is sealing this with RTV silicone when we're done. There's just, there's no way to get something so old with so many heat cycles to come apart without breaking. You might be able to manage it, but you know what? It is, Not an easy trick. Let go. There we go. All right. So we've got a spring. The gasket looks like it's in decent shape. And then now that this is apart, this wonderful deal pulls out of the gasket. We're going to put the new one in. Make sure the orientation is the large hole is gonna to face toward the motor. So this is going in like so, the large hole faces towards this. Very nice. Okay, so that's done. <laughs> I'm gonna get some silicone to line the edge of this as we put it back together. Here, changeover rod. We are just going to pull it straight out. Might need a little convincing from the other side. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely takes a little convincing to get it started. I may need even more room to get it out. Let's go ahead and pop that out of the way. I may need to remove that too. All right, let's see. All sorts of stuff needs to come out of the way. There we go, now we have enough room to pull the sucker all the way out. Remember which direction we've got that witness mark, the little locking tab, it's gonna be up. <laughs> These are the bushings that we are replacing. Should be able to 
wiggle this flat head in there and pull them apart. There we go. See how that separates? I'll do the same on the other side. Get that in there. Separate. Those come apart. All right. These go right back on there in place. Just snap together. All right, so it really took some force to get those apart, but you see these are the old ones. When they wear out, it ruins this thing. So you want to replace these before they wear out. That's, that's the ideal. All right, so here, same deal. Wiggle that apart. Wiggle that apart. Those come off. New parts go on. Squeeze together. All right. So this should be ready to go back in place other than the, um, the rod end here, which I'm gonna put on after we put the end back in place. Keeping the notch side up. Very interesting. So interestingly enough, these seem to be octagonal versus the old ones that are um, round. <laughs> and they don't want to fit back in this manifold. And I'm looking at the manifold and it appears, yes, to be round. <laughs> so that is an interesting challenge here. It's the veritable square peg, and they used to go in a round hole. Five minutes later. All right, I just double checked the instructions on this, and sure enough, it is supposed to be super, super tight and difficult to get in there. So we're gonna go ahead and trust the science here. And it says that you, you may actually need to use uh, a mallet because it's going to be so difficult to get in. And um, that certainly, it certainly is difficult. So I am using quite a bit of force. I don't see any way to get a mallet in there and do it. So we'll real carefully do some monkey work here. The instructions specifically say it will seem odd or wrong, and it certainly does. So here we, yep, there we go. Using the, the mallet to get this <laughs> in there. Uh-huh. I, yeah, I don't know. I want to hit the end of that because that's going to... Yeah, be kind of a bad day if that breaks. So what we want to do at this point is we want to get it into the point where the ends of the rod, the big flat end, is even on both sides. So here it's flush, but over here it's still inset quite a bit. So we need to bring this in a little bit further for that to be where it needs to be. So just a little farther. Again, I'm a little terrified to <laughs> use the mallet, but this is kind of about there. I'll check the other side. 
So here we have about, you know, 10 centimeters in maybe. It looks pretty even. So we are gonna install this cap. And then if this needs to be tapped in any further, then we'll, we'll deal with that as well. Yeah, the instructions say this will be terrifying and I, I completely agree that I don't like having to bang on that. That was awful. But so here's where we've got the end cap that needs to go back in place and we are, we are not, <laughs> not gonna drop it this time around as we install this. Okay. By the way, instead of using this fancy thing here, you can also use one of these. These are pretty inexpensive. You find them at most hardware stores. Of course, mine's not super expensive, but this is just another simple solution for dealing with these screws without needing the big fancy piece. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way until I get the other one in. Okay, you do not need Kung Fu Voodoo Monkey Death Grip. Just guten tight, as the Germans say. And we need to get a little vacuum hose to deal with that. So let me go find vacuum hose and we will get this connected up the way it needs to be. All right, got some vacuum hose. I'm gonna slide it onto the hard line first. And then I will cut a section of a little bit of slack. Uh, this is kind of difficult to get both hands in there, but. So we'll plug that vacuum hose onto the nipple on the bottom of this. There we go. All right, that is on there. And then I put on some cleaner gloves because these are just nasty at this point with uh, RTV silicone. And the rain is definitely hitting here, so <laughs> I wanna wrap this up. Okay, so now that that's all set in place, this is gonna line up like so. Both of those are nice and tight. Now we will put on the lever arm. There is a notch in this. It can only go on one way. If you're trying to force it, it doesn't work. You're doing it wrong. That is on and that is on. Voila, we are done. So that took a little bit longer than expected because I kept dropping things down in the recesses of the engine bay, but I mean, such is the nature of mechanical work. You're gonna drop stuff, it's gonna happen. It's usually gonna be your 10 millimeter socket, but I've got a little bit more cleanup work to do. Put back all these trim pieces that were once in place and put back this this sensor here, connector, whatever it was that clips in place. So I've got a few things to clean up. We'll get those back in, in spot, but this itself, that's great. This is now gonna work <laughs> the way it's supposed to work without falling off of the end and it'll be a beautiful thing. And I might even put a little bit of silicone uh, lubricant on there just for good measure, but it should be good. It's Delrin, it's self-lubricating really. But wait, there's more. Yes, a little follow-up on this. We're not quite done with this project. So I've driven around a couple of days and I've noticed that while the parts are amazing, 
um, the piston is getting pulled down into the short runner position, uh, which is good for full throttle, but it's not returning. So the, the bushings here on the rod are too tight after all. And after talking with the folks at Groovin, uh, Mike at Groovin, thank you, let me know that I may need to remove the rod and do a little bit of monkey work to it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the rod back out again and we are going to finesse the inner diameter of those bushings on the rod. Just um, shave them a little bit with some sandpaper, just smooth them out just a little bit, gives it some grease, and then put it back together and we should see some freer movement here. I'm gonna also make sure there's some grease on the gaskets on both ends of this as well so it's nice and lubed up and, and freely moving. So that's what we're gonna do here right now. Get this rod out and Yeah, we're gonna just take these rings off one more time. We're gonna just very carefully do a little bit of grinding around the inside, with some sandpaper, provide some lubricant, and then reinstall this puppy. the inner diameter, the inside here, that we're just going to do a very, very gentle bit of sanding. We're not going to remove very much material at all, just, just ever so slightly. And then grease it up. And you can see there's some lubrication on it. It's mostly oil from, you know, just oil being in the intake track. This one seems pretty dry. So we'll get some grease on there and that should help it out quite a bit. So I got some 320 grit and yeah, I'm gonna tear off a little bit. It is wet dry, I'm gonna wet it. And just take my finger essentially and Now they got them a little bit dirty in this process and so now I'm going to clean them up before I grease them up and install them. So now I'm going to put a little bit of lube in here, some little grease. here put that on there snap it in place a really firm snap on that and what does it feel like feels pretty good. Got yeah. a little bit of grease around this one as well on these contact points. Just see if we can get it to slide in a little bit easier. So this is that. I'm also going to put some grease on the ends. Free move. 
movement on these. So just tuck off barely enough. Let's give it another whirl. And I hopefully we're, we're there now with a functional moving rod arm. So once again, the terrifying part of hammering it <laughs> into its home. Seems like it might need one little whack just to sit flush the way it's supposed to on this end. So I'll just do that. That's good, okay. Oh, look at that, all right. That's what we wanna see. So we'll give that a couple of running cycles, but that looks like it is better and what it is actually supposed to be doing. So much better, much better. All right, we'll run that. Two hours later. And all back together. So um, lesson, lesson learned. Just remember, even though parts are custom made, for our cars, and I am super appreciative that companies like Grooven Parts do make parts for our aging cars. Let's be real, they're 20 years old. They're, they're old, nobody should be making parts for them, but still we've got custom machined parts like this assembly, and sometimes they do need a little bit of finagling to get them to work exactly, because even though they're very precisely machined, there's always room for the individual car to be a problem child, which mine, tend to be. So anyway, I am very grateful to have these parts available. Thank you, Groovin, Mike, you guys, everyone out there that's making these things. I appreciate it so much. And uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful to you. If you've got a VR6 and you need to deal with this, I hope that that gave you a little bit more confidence that it's, you know, it's doable. It's doable at home with hand tools. You can handle it. So God bless, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you later. Bye-bye. And on that terrible disappointment, <laughs> it's time to say goodbye. We'll be back. <laughs>